Hello folks, I'm Rob Machado for AOPA Live. I'd like you to try an experiment for me, and don't worry, this doesn't involve test tubes and beakers. Yes, I know some of you are disappointed. Maybe next time. I want you to stare at the flashing green dot in the center of this graphic and tell me what happens to the yellow dots. Go ahead, give it a try. You saw the yellow dots disappear and reappear, didn't you? Ah, ah, don't deny it. You know what you saw. While I'm in control of this presentation, I can assure you that I did not make those dots disappear from the screen. Those dots disappeared in your mind. Okay, let's try one more experiment and then I'll let you know what's going on here. What I want you to do next is stare at the plus sign in the center of this graphic and tell me what happens to the magenta circles. Go ahead. As you can see, or better phrased, as you can't see, the magenta circles disappeared. Once again, those circles never left the graphic, but they did disappear from your visual field of perception. Now, what you've just experienced is primarily the result of something known as the Troxler effect. In 1804, Paul Vital Troxler noticed that when you fixate your vision on a particular spot, a stimulus that might initially be visible in your peripheral vision begins to fade and then disappears. And this is why those yellow dots disappeared and the magenta circles blended into the gray background. Now this happens because our sensory system tends to adapt to a constant stimulus. And with your eyes fixed on one spot, the eyes adapt to any stimulus lying beyond your center of focus. And for, for your eyes to actually identify the peripheral stimulus, you have to keep shifting your vision over short periods of time. And it turns out that the neurons in the visual system underlying the eye's rods and cones have relatively large receptive fields. And despite the natural tendency of your eyes to make small and involuntary movements, in other words, they shift on their own, but only through very small amounts. These movements aren't large enough to stimulate nearby neurons, so you end up not noticing things that move in your peripheral vision when your gaze is actually fixed. And this is why you don't want to fix your vision on any one spot for more than a few seconds when scanning for traffic. If you do, it's possible that a moving aircraft in your peripheral vision might disappear from your perception. Instead, you want to keep your head, so to speak, on a swivel, scanning in 10 to 15 degree sectors, stopping only for a few seconds in each to check for traffic. Now, would you like to see how this scan method produces better results? Okay, scan the first graphic again, but this time look toward the flashing green dot, then shift your focus to the right and left every few seconds. You should notice that the yellow dots don't appear to disappear. So the next time you're looking for traffic, scan in short, regularly spaced movements that bring successive areas of the sky into the central visual field. Observe each for at least a second or two to see what's there, then shift your visual focus to another area. I'm Rob Machado for AOPA Live.